Hello everyone, this is Ethan. And today I'm going to be talking about how safe are home locks and auth bearer tokens. And so I had a, a question about, you know, your home was exposed to the entire world and to be able to access it, right? Not obviously not everyone's gonna be accessing it. Very few people are, uh, but how safe is that? And uh, I couldn't find the, a great answer. It seems like the, it really depends on what key you have, what lock you have. Um, but this is probably the most distinct one. You know, it goes from 216 different combinations for some very small three tumbler uh, locks, three pin tumbler locks to over 1 billion. So you can see there's a very wide range there. And uh, it, it's kind of disturbing uh, how easy it might be to just take your key and put it in someone else's lock and have it open. Um, thankfully, auth bearer tokens are not the same at all. <laughs> and we kind of run into the same issue with cloud functions because, um, you know, Google Cloud functions are publicly available on the Internet. Uh, you know, certainly you need to know what the address is, right, just like of your home. But, you know, anyone can access it. And so it's very important to have some type of security attached to it. And so today we're going to be talking about a specific type of security uh, called auth bearer token, where you provide a token in the headers of the request, and then it will say whether you can access that or not, that endpoint. So I'm going to show you a quick example of what it looks like here. So we have the, the address. And then we have in our authorization, we have our token. And then you can see what our token is right here. And yeah, let's just send this request and see what happens. I'll dig into the code in a little bit. So you can see that we have a request marked as okay. Now I just want to make a completely different token, just remove that nine there and show you what happens. Ah, uh, not authorized. So this is exactly what we want. And you can see, just for fun, you can show a different request if you try a different method, still same, right? So let's move that back so I can do it for testing later. Let's look at the code. It's actually really straightforward. So you have uh, your endpoint, call it anything you want. It always has a request in it for an HTTP request. We import some modules. I always like to import them within the function. And then we have the request, and then we get the headers of that request. Let's go back over to Postman here. So the authorization, that is sent in the headers of the request. And so what we're doing is we are getting the headers off of the request, and then we're getting the authorization, and then that's a key, and it has a bearer in it. And we're just getting that token. We're essentially extracting that code token. And then um, we say if the environment variable auth bearer token is equal to the token that was passed in the request, then return OK. If not, I imported this abort 401 unauthorized access from Flask here. And the way that we set environment variables for this, right, is we say, Let's see here. We have Google Cloud Functions, deploy, auth, and we have right here is the important one, right? I set the auth bearer token to my environment variable, and I'm just refer uh, referencing that. And you can see the project that I'm on. And when deploying this, it'll give you an endpoint, and that is what we put in here, right? And so if you look at our cloud function, let's say, you know, someone has access to it or someone leaves the company and we need to change our auth bearer token. It's very, very, very easy when you set it as an environment variable. And so you can see the, the failed request here. And then we have the okay response right here. And then we had an error earlier. So you can see that it is in fact working. And uh, don't worry about this. This is from a test earlier. And you can see here is the token that we're using. And so let's say someone leaves, we can go to, we can edit this function. And we can go to more. And we can edit that token, hit save, and then update it. So it's relatively straightforward. 
Um, you know, when you have a, a cloud function out on the internet, and hopefully not a lot of people know how to guess your endpoint, but in the event that they can, having an auth bearer token is somewhat helpful. It's not the most secure in the world, but it definitely is better than just having it uh, exposed on the internet. So hopefully you learned a little something about locks today and something about cloud functions. Let me know if you have any comments, questions, concerns in the comments.